Olympian, marathon record holder, one of the fastest people in this country, to talk about advocacy, gender, and double standards in sports. Good morning. Good morning. This started for you, not with the magazine and the photo shoot, but it actually started when you were in Ottawa. Mm-hmm. And you were speaking about uh, women in sport to, a, I guess, what it was, a parliamentary committee on, on sport. What happened? Uh, yeah, I was asked to go speak up uh, about women in sport at the Heritage Committee in front of the House of Commons. And I, I jumped at the opportunity. I thought it was great. Uh, I had a lot of important points that I wanted to raise and discuss and thought I had done an okay job. And then afterwards, I uh, found out that my words actually didn't matter. The one statement that I made during an hour-long discussion, I'd said, don't comment on my body, comment on my performance. And apparently, apparently, because of how I choose to dress when I compete and because of the photos I've done for magazine covers previously, I wasn't, I was told uh, by a lot of people out there that I'm not allowed to say that, that if I'm going to choose to compete in a bra top and brief bottoms, I'm not, you're, everyone's allowed to comment on my body and not even in such a way that it's an athletic comment that I'm, I'm muscular, I'm fit. If people want to comment and diminish my performance because they think I'm hot or I'm sexy, they're allowed to do that. My words don't matter. My performances don't matter. What have you heard from people over the course of your extraordinary career about appearance? What have people said to you, not about how fast you run, but about how you look? Uh, a lot of times I receive comments when I finish a race of, I can't believe you just ran a marathon. You look beautiful. And I'm like, I'm not out here trying to look like anything but a runner. Uh, and, you know, as, as a female, I think that's it's a hard line to draw because we are told to care about our appearances and we are, you know, ha- we, we have to kind of present ourselves as put together. But when I'm running a marathon, there's nothing sexy and there's nothing pretty about it. I can tell you that. <laughs> it's hard work. And I've put in just as much work as my male counterparts. And if you're not going to comment on them, and if you think they, they look sexy or hot, then don't comment on me that way. This leads then to this conversation that people are, are having about the magazine. And, and the photo that, that you took that has been circulating around, and the photo, I guess, that they didn't run. What was the picture that, that the magazine declined to run because they thought it was too sexy? Uh, it was one where I was actually in a collared shirt because I'm a lawyer as well, and my, I'm a lawyer by day. Uh, and I'm in a collared shirt, and I'm sitting on a chair, and I'm holding a pair of running shoes. And it's supposed to be this play on my double life. And they decided that it was too overtly sexual. And I'm I'm sitting there going, I'm wearing clothes, and I get maybe the pose in, in some minds could be a bit provocative, but not. Because if, if I had been a man and I'm lounging in a, in a big open arm chair with my shirt unbuttoned and open and I'm there's a pair of there's running shoes scattered around me, that would be seen as powerful and sexy. Yeah. But me sitting on like posed on a chair holding my running shoes was too sexy and not powerful. And so your response in part is to write about it, but also to take another photo. Yeah, because what I did it, within my <laughs> frustration is all I did was Google Canadian Olympians shirtless. And all of these images popped up, and uh, an I Run Magazine photo came up. And it was the one that's in my article with, of Adam Vancouver in. And I'm sitting there going, how is me with clothes on still too sexy, but in a running magazine, a canoe kayaker can be posing with no shirt on? Male runners, professional male runners, don't run shirtless. So if you're going to be on the cover of a running magazine, why isn't he wearing a shirt? And that developed into this conversation about the female body being just inherently more sexual and Adam's shirtless and I'm half naked. What were you trying to achieve in, in, in having this broader conversation? The response has been um, a very lively one and a lot of people have, have uh, gotten involved in this. But what were you trying to, to do with this? Um, I was, I tried the verbal approach. I'd gone to the House of Commons. I'd had a lot of important things to say in interviews after that. I, you know, had a lot of important things to say and pointed out, like, I'm doing this for my nieces and for your daughters and for your sisters and the the women in your family, that whether it's on the field of play or in a professional aspect of our lives, what we do matters, not how we look doing it. Uh, And so I realized that my words weren't necessary. My words were falling on deaf ears and maybe people are more visual learners and maybe people would get it if I show exactly the same amount of skin as Adam, actually less. Um, 
if people would would understand what I'm what I'm saying. What has to change, um, not just for yourself, but but for um, the broader conversation, to 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 alter so that people are focusing on achievement, as you said, and not how people look. Take gender out of it as best we can. Whether it's women's soccer or men's soccer, they're athletes out there. They're soccer players, and comment on their performances. And again especially in my sport, my body is very much my equipment. There's going to be comments on my body. I'm not pretending that's not going to happen. But even like I testified in front of the House of Commons, if you want to comment on my behind, comment on it because it's it's muscular. And comparative to other distance runners, maybe I'm more muscular than others. Very much my body is what I do. Every athlete, it's it's what we do. And there's going to be comments about it. But what you find sexy isn't what I find sexy or somebody else. So don't put your labels on on my body and take gender out of it. Our performances, we're athletes first, we're male or female second. Are you encouraged by the response? I have been, yes. Yeah. It's been very positive. You're, new to, you're living now here in Toronto? Yes. That's awesome. Um, why did you, just finally, why did you move here? You were down in Memphis? Uh, I'm My job's still in Tennessee. Tennessee. And I still spl- I'll split my time there. But instead of having seven different homes that I r- rotate through through the year, I wanted a Canadian hub. And why not, why not have it be Toronto? Toronto's been good to me with my records and my Olympic qualifiers and my Pan Ams medals. So it seemed like a good place to be. We're glad you're here. People keep reporting on being passed by you as so they're <laughs> out running. Uh, I look forward to that opportunity. In the meantime, thank you. Thank you. It's Lainey Marchand. She is an Olympian national marathon record holder, one of the fastest people in this country.